Hi, I'm Mark Jardine, Managing Editor of SailWorld.com and YachtsAndYachting.com. And today I'm speaking with Stuart Lawrence, who is the Vice Captain of JOG, the Junior Offshore Group. Hi. Hi, Mark. Now, first, can you tell me a bit about your background in sailing and how you got into the sport? Uh, yeah, so I actually first started with uh, my father. He used to take me sailing in Germany when he was in the military. Um, sailing lasers badly. Um, he would sit on the back of the boat smoking his pipe and I'd slowly progressively get a bit better. Um, but I often have memories of him floating in the water trying to smoke his pipe still after a, a nasty jive. Um, that seems like um, quite a technique to be able to master. But yacht racing, how did you get into that first? Um, yeah, so I first got into it when a friend of mine bought uh, a small boat. It was a McGregor. So I don't know if I can quite class that as yacht racing. But um, that was my kind of introduction. We did a round the island race in that. And then I decided that I wanted to kind of progress a lot further. Um, so I went from there to doing a few fast net races. So I went as paid crew on boats, on school boats. Um, and then I just decided that it was probably time to buy my own boat rather than uh, sitting on the rail on a fast net race, not doing a lot. Um, so I, I bought um, a boat and then progressed up to a Santa Cruz, which I had until about uh, four years ago. Um, that was a bit, I guess that was a midlife crisis, my Santa Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> and your your route into racing, um, which after the fast net, which type, what type of events did you do? Um, so I would mainly do offshore races. So I uh, I remember after I bought my first boat, someone said to me that I should go and do a jog race because you know they're a lot more fun, as in they they have more of a sociable aspect to them after the racing. So I, I pitched up and did a, a race to pull. Um, and I haven't really looked back since. <laughs> that's, that's kind of what got me hooked. And so since then, Jog has been the centre of your racing. But 2017, you joined the Jog committee. And how were things going within Jog? Uh, yeah, so in 2017, when I joined the committee, I was... Um, we were kind of addressing issues like decline in numbers. We were in the middle of a, a bit of a technology turnaround. So we'd, we'd gone from people writing results down on pieces of paper and scanning them to trying to be a bit more electronic. Um, and we, we had many kind of challenges to, to work through. So we were looking at Obviously, the decline of the offshore side of racing, uh, decline of numbers. Um, and the, these are all things that kind of challenged us as a, as a group. I think they challenged a, a lot of clubs um, with those kind of issues. But um, that's really where we kind of started to make a start on what we consider sort of a slight transformation of JOG. And with the technology side you had to couple that with keeping the ethos of jog the whole social side but making sure that everybody within the crew was included how did you go about that yeah i mean obviously it's quite a tough one with uh, a club that's 70 years old this year is to try and modernize a club but also be sympathetic to its history and we, um, we kind of recognize that engagement with crew is a really important factor. So we'd, we'd been doing a lot of our communications to skippers. And in fact, we'd only communicate to skippers. We, we wouldn't really talk to crew at all. So one of the earlier things we decided as a committee was to really try and reach out to crew and make them more connected to a jog race. So we introduced WhatsApp. WhatsApp was a way of us kind of sending messages out about the race and keeping people informed. 
also letting them know about after a race where everyone would be meeting up for a sociable activity. And that was a real success. So we, uh, we saw large numbers of people signing up and pre WhatsApp days, we would announce that we would, we would all be meeting up for a prize giving somewhere. And we probably have 30 people and they were mainly skippers. Uh, post WhatsApp, we would have literally 100 people turn up to a post race um, event or a prize giving. And so it kind of really taught us that we had to connect with crew members as well as skippers uh, in most of the things that we do. Um, so we, we modernized our, our web platform. So we made it first so that it was completely mobile. We introduced things like uh, crew and boat finder. What, what, what we found with the platform is we were able to uh, connect all of the information up together. So for example, a crew member can go online, they can see what races they're doing. They can see how many miles they've sailed with jog that season or overall. They can join leaderboards so they can see uh, where they rank against their peers as far as how many miles that they've done. Um, and then they could also use the, the crew finder and boat finder to actually connect with other members of JOG who, who were looking for people to come and sail on their boats. I was always surprised actually when, when you speak to owners of boats, they're always struggling to find crew. And you know some of that is time commitment, but I was always amazed that someone would struggle to find crew in such a great sport. So the, the crew finder was something that's been really successful in connecting people together, but on our platform. So they don't have to go away and be um, buried by a load of adverts. They, they come onto the jog platform and they're able to advertise themselves as crew or a boat and you know, put their credentials down and share what they've done with jog as well. And this way with the crew putting the details of what races they've done, it can also be backed up because all of the, the JOG website recording exactly what races they've done. It means the owner can see that they are going to be an experienced crew and this must help. Absolutely. When, when you're first getting into support, particularly, is miles are really important to you. So there's a lot of emphasis on the RYA courses about miles. So we kind of recognize that recording them for someone and giving them a place to see and share meant that they've kind of got a single place to go for at least their jog racing. Um, now with the racing, so after a few years of decline, in the last couple of years, you've seen steady or excellent growth in the racing that you have with participation. Yeah, so in 2019, we saw a 30% increase in our, in our membership numbers. Um, and that obviously translated to race entries as well. Um, this season, even with uh, the, the pandemic, we've seen a 16% increase in our membership numbers as well. And with, of course, the season itself this year was delayed for obvious reasons, but your season opener, the Lonely Tower race, over 140 boats entered, I understand. Yeah, so this year has been challenging for for all clubs, um, but the Lonely Tower race was certainly a big race for us. It's it's always a big race. It's the season opener, but 141 boats was a real achievement. Especially, you know, it was the first major race in Solent, um, and it required committee and our secretary a lot of planning so we we did a lot of coordination with uh, we had medical advisors helping us we had um, coordination with RYA we also had um, RNLI advising us as well so it, it was a real challenge to try and open up racing and, and make a start again but it was a really successful race. It seems throughout this with the JOG committee and the way that you're organizing things, 
is very much a cohesive approach and thinking, okay, how can we make everything work together? Yeah, so we've, we're a not-for-profit club. So we, we have um, a secretary who's employed by the club and then the rest of the time is given up by people and their own skills. So we're, we're fortunate enough to have really good leadership in the committee and that leadership has helped divide up some of these tasks in order to, to make a real big difference. When people first are coming into the sport of sailing, they may be cruising sailors, done the occasional race or are new to the sport. How do you bring them into the jog fold so that they feel part of the community? Yeah, so that's a, a really good question. We, first of all, we've got a lot of guidance on our website. So if you're a new skipper or you've just bought a boat and you want to start racing, then it can be quite daunting if you think about you've got to get a certificate, you've got to go through certain safety requirements. So we have a, a nine step guide to racing with job. We try to get it down to like five steps, but nine is the least we can get to. But it, it's quite a concise guide to how to join jog and then enter a race from, from starting with just the boat. Um, we also do a lot on the social side. So we look out for new members, new boats that have come along and our secretary will actually um, go and meet those people after a race to you know, see if they've got any questions. We, um, we typically, the secretary is available to ring and he, uh, Martin will, walk through any of the aspects that can be a bit taxing especially with the, the offshore side um, so we, we we're very open armed to new members and we have members on the committee that will uh, will help anybody who's looking to come and race with jog to um, understand what what needs to be done uh, it's actually quite simple but for someone that's coming new to it it can be quite difficult so re really holding their hand through those first steps. And as you say, it couldn't be five steps, but just nine steps, which can get them across that line and really help them out in the first stage rather than them blundering around trying to find out the information from multiple sources. Yeah, and we, we very much see ourselves at the grassroots of keelboat sailing. So we have and we we recognize our responsibility to get more boats into racing so we make ourselves very accessible to make it easy for people to start racing with us and i actually remember when i first started racing with jog i had lots of uh, questions and and the secretary at the time was immensely helpful i remember um the current secretary who was captain at the time meeting me at the dock and making sure that I had a good race. And I don't think any of that has changed within JOG. That seems like an ethos which is fantastic for increasing the numbers that we see in sailing. Now, when it comes to planning out a season, how do you organise which races are going to happen when, making sure that it's suitable for that time of year and also the tides? Yeah, we, we see it as really important to try and cover as much ground as possible within the shortest time. So tides are really important to us. We plan all of our races around tide. We try and ensure that we protect the smallest members of our fleet because we're, we're a small, primarily for small boats on offshore racing. So our, our key is to protect our our smaller boats and make sure that they can actually finish a race in a in a suitable time. Um, Jog has two formats. So we have the, the inshore format, which is more coastal racing, and then we have the offshore format. So a lot of people find, especially when they're first coming into sport, is that the inshore format is a really good way to dip their toe into racing. And also it, it kind of meets their time expectations. So things have changed massively over the last 10 years in terms of how much how much time people have so planning a race is really important in that regard so an example of that is uh, this season 
we had a race which covered 50 miles and our smallest boat completed it in seven hours. And that's just by making sure the tide's with them on the way there and with them on the way back. 2020 has seen a huge growth in shorthanded racing, partly due to the pandemic and the need for social distancing, but partly it, this is a trend in our sport. How has that changed things? Yeah, double-handed is definitely increasing in its popularity and we, we fully embrace that. We have separate results for double-handed. So they race with the main classes, but their results are extracted out to a double-handed group. Um, an example of numbers there. So if we look at the Lonely Tower race where we had 141 entries, we had um, 352 crew members in that race. Uh, typically, in a normal year, we'd have expected about 700 crew members. So we, whilst we fully embrace double-handed, we recognise that we have challenges also to bring new people into the sport because with less spaces on boats, it makes it more of a challenge to find boats that require crew. And that, that's an area where we definitely focus hard on. So an exceptional year for double-handed boats, but an area you embrace, but also making sure that the crewed boats can bring people into the sport and increase participation that way. Yeah, so for um, crewed boats, obviously we, we have the crew finder capability on our website. So we're, you know, we're very much making it easier for boat owners and crew to find each other. Um, so that we, we then kind of push that side of our sport also. And looking forward to 2021, we're hoping that things are going to be far more normal. And what is the season opener? Back to the Lonely Tower race again? So we've got the, the Lonely Tower race, which is our um, really popular race at the beginning of the season in March. So it's, uh, it's always a season starter, so you can test your thermals out properly. Um, so yeah, we've, we're very much looking forward to that. It's what, three months away now? If you, yeah, it's around <laughs> that now. It's difficult to think of it. Yeah. <laughs> and if people are wanting to get involved in JOG, they like the look of what they see, who should they contact? Yeah, so first they should go to our website. They'll see, um, they can contact our secretary, who is our, our forward facing person for the club. Um, there's a lot of information on our website. We're also on Facebook and Instagram as well. So we've, we've done a lot on social media and it's worth them looking through that. But certainly if they want to come and sail in jog or bring their boat to one of our races, we would fully embrace them. They should uh, contact the secretary and he, he can help on any areas where they might have some questions or concerns. Well, it is fantastic to see that JOG are increasing participation in sailing using a combination of community, technology, and a really well thought out approach. So Stuart, many thanks indeed for your time today. Thank you, Mark.